Super Rugby Round 14, folks. The penultimate round of the regular season is in the bag, and everyone is still in the playoffs hunt, barring the Waratahs, who are now mathematically out of the race. The Crusaders kept their chances of playoff rugby alive with their win over the Blues. We'll go through the games of this round pretty quick, some of the results and the standings, plus the final round fixtures, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how things went at the weekend. Friday games, the initial one was a top of the table clash between the Chiefs and the Hurricanes. The Chiefs at home with an unchanged lineup from that team, which was a little bit kind of lackluster over in Melbourne. And they didn't get the job done, admittedly against a pretty high power uh, Hurricane side, but the Hurricanes had a red card in this one, man. Tupu Tupu ended up getting red carded after a seventh minute shot against Tupo Vai. Personally, I found that one a little bit harsh because Vai literally bends down and puts his head first into the contact. The, I'm assuming they were saying Tupu Tupu didn't rap, but he wasn't given much of a chance to rap. He was pretty bent, he was pretty low. I don't know, man. That one, that one seemed harsh. For mine, but um, what can I say? The Hurricanes still managed to get the win despite the red card. Numia uh, scored a heck of a props try. He almost deserves to be in the back line uh, with some of his footwork. And Jordy Barrett got one from a really slick set play. 14-0 uh, half, halftime lead for the Hurricanes. Uh, the Chiefs certainly came out firing in the second half. Early tried to Narwa and uh, Satiti got one as well. It was all tied up right until Brett Cameron slotted a uh, 78th minute penalty to get the win for the Canes. So yeah, that certainly bolsters the Canes' uh, chances of chasing down that top spot as we head into the final round. But um, yeah, the Chiefs now can't make that top spot, but they will finish somewhere in the top four. So big win for the Canes in that one. Chiefs will be looking to bounce back in that final round. Uh, second of the Friday games was an absolute flogging with the Brumbies taking on the Rebels over in Canberra. 53-17. Um, yeah, the Rebels form is in a bit of a is a bit of a bad place as we head into playoffs, right? But they will be in the playoffs, which is at least good news for the Rebels because it's not something they've managed to do before. But, I mean, the Brumbies, Brown, Wright got two, Frost, Pollard, Van Neck, Reimer. Mostly Fords getting tries for the Brumbies, but they certainly showed some like bloody nice hands and offloads in the build-up to some of their tries. They certainly punished the Rebels' yellow card in the first half when they ran in three tries. Brumbies had some yellow cards of their own, which allowed Dalgunu to at least get one. Angelo Smith got another. But, I mean, 34-3 at halftime. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty one-sided affair. So the Brumbies, they're in pretty good form, man. I mean, Tom Wright bump, bumping off Brad Wilkin for a try. Uh, it's not supposed to happen that way. So the Rebels will be a little bit, a little bit frustrated with some of that. But the Brumbies are a good side. And, uh, conversely to the Rebels going into the playoffs, potentially in some pretty hot form, man. And, uh, they'll certainly, um, be chasing down that that first spot as well, as I said, as we head into the final round. Um, the first of the Saturday games was Moana Pacifica taking on the Waratah, so two sides at the very bottom of the table. Moana Pacifica managed to get it done, 27-12. Um, as I said, that eliminates the Waratahs officially from the playoffs, not that they were ever really a chance to make it with their two final games, but they were mathematically a chance, not anymore. They had an early try uh, chalked off for Dylan Peach. And then uh, Moana Pacifica essentially ran in 27 unanswered points. There were tries to Tamofilao, who looks pretty bloody good. Uh, Fine Anisi scored uh, a couple of crackers. And Kepu uh, got one as he's eyeing up retirement. So good on him for getting a try. Uh, in what will be his last home match as they're away uh, for their final game. So 14-0 lead at halftime. Then a 27-0 lead. Waratahs running a couple of um, late tries. Gleason and Parise. Parise has one was nice. I mean, he was length of the field. But uh, yeah, a bit too little, too late for the uh, for the Waratahs. Their season and their you know, their coach is going uh, after one more game, so it's basically been a bit of a write off. Minor Pacifica are still in eleventh. They are still a chance to make the playoffs, but they'll need a lot of results to go their way. Uh, the Crusaders against the Blues. That was a big game because the Crusaders are essentially already playing finals footy. They uh, they needed to get a win over the number one spot having only lost once blues to keep their season alive and they bloody well did it 
Exceptional performances from Ethan Blackadder and Cody Taylor especially uh, led their team to uh, to a pretty famous win, man. Great crowd down there in Canterbury. They would have loved getting that win over the Blues. The Blues could have eliminated the Crusaders with a win, but couldn't get it done. The Blues were in front at halftime, 15-12. Uh, off of Tuunga Fassi had bagged a couple of tries. AJ Lamb ended up scoring a couple as well. But, I mean, for the Crusaders, Blackadder got one. He ended up making 27 tackles, which is insane. Uh, Fihaki got one, which was from a nice Cody Taylor kind of tap when they had a uh, advantage in the Blues 22. Blues weren't quite ready for it, so good quick thinking from the All Blacks hooker. Uh, Leo Willey got one. During a yellow card, which I wasn't that happy with, Peter Fitzer got yellow card. And I'm a Blues fan, and I'm pretty biased, but I thought that yellow card for Peter Fitzer, deliberate knock-on, was pretty harsh. Deliberate knock-ons for the hundreds of games I've been watching over the last goodness knows how long are generally if you stick one hand out and bat the ball, not if you get two hands on it. If you get two hands on it, you're usually pretty safe because it means you've actually had a genuine chance to catch it. AFL cat players catch the ball above their head all the time. I thought he was going for the ball. I mean, you can argue the guys are going, the deliberate knock-on law kind of sucks. A lot of the time you can see the guys going for it with one hand, but it tends to be if you don't get it, you're getting carded, whereas... Two hands is usually fine. But no, two hands was not fine for Peter Fetter. He got yellow carded. Blues did get one try during the yellow card. Lamb got one of his tries in that period. But then, like, the Leo Willey try from a cross kick was genuinely because there was more space with the Blues missing an outside back. Not that I'm bitter or anything. The Crusaders genuinely did play better than the Blues in that second half. Hotham got a try. A nice support line from a uh, Fergus Burke line break. So, yeah, man, Crusaders... As I said, their scrum was great. Those All Blacks guys were great. They uh, deserved winners at the end of it. The Blues losing bonus point is at least one thing to keep the Blues top of the table. But the Crusaders still alive with one round to play. Certainly makes the last round really spicy. Uh, Reds against the Force was another hiding. 59-13. Uh, the Force don't travel well. And uh, the Reds absolutely put them to sword. That man, Tim Ryan, cannot stop scoring tries. Three tries. Uh, against the force, some crackers in there as well. Campbell gets one, Udu gets one, Fassler gets one, McCray gets two, uh, Nasser gets one. So some real mixture of tries, kind of like the, um, the Brumbies. Like the hands were great. Some of them were like uh, backs in open field. Some of them were, were pretty close range jobbies, but eight clean breaks to one is a pretty damning stat for the force. If you're playing schoolyard rules, the force get the last try. So if you go in last try wins, the force did get that. I guess the Waratahs did as well, but... Um, yeah, not helped by yellow cards. We well, got a couple of yellow cards to force, but ultimately, man, uh, some slick backs and some powerful forwards from the Reds means uh, means they are genuinely that kind of fifth team. Uh, the final game, Highlanders Drew. The Highlanders have secured their playoffs uh, spot with a win over the Drew. The Drew also don't travel well. 39-3. Drew are the only side this week not to score a try. Highlanders get tries through Nadaki, who's back and looked really sharp. Scored two great tries. Nipkins got one. That's for Tomatavuki Nipkins. Uh, Tabatava Nawe and Broughton. Some great hands also from the Highlanders. They, uh, they are a real mixed bag team as well. A little bit like the Reds. Some weeks the Highlanders genuinely just look awful. But some weeks they look great. This was one of their great weeks. 18-0 uh, lead at halftime. Took 17 minutes to get the first score. But once the floodgates opened, um, the draw were really kind of... Yeah, really put to the sword. The um, the draw only points coming from a 45th minute penalty. They did have like a really bounce of a ball going not their way chance early on, but I don't think the draw were winning that one despite their chartered flight down to um, down to Otago. So yeah, still in that eighth spot are the draw, but um, yeah, a must win game for them coming up. Looking at the table after 14 rounds, the Blues are first tied for points. Uh, with the Hurricanes, so both sides will be chasing down that top spot. The Brumbies are there in third. They will be hoping both the Hurricanes and the Blues drop their final game, and then the, 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 the Brumbies could potentially sneak in either a first or second spot if either of those teams lose and they win. The Chiefs are there in fourth spot, so they are pretty comfortably above the Reds, but a little bit behind the, the other three top teams now. The teams just outside the top four, but still in the playoffs at the moment are the Reds. As I mentioned, Still below the top four, but still above six, seven, and eight. Uh, they are guaranteed to finish in that fifth spot, so they will end up playing whoever finishes fourth away. Uh, the Highlanders in 28th, as I said, have secured their spot, and the Rebels are also secure 
there in seventh. They can't be caught. But that one last spot, currently held by the Drua on 21 points. The other teams, the Force on 19, the Crusaders on 19, and Water Pacific on 18, can still make it. But the Drua are still the favorites. If they can win their final game, they are home and free. The other results aren't going to matter. If the Drua lose, then it'll depend what happens with the games with the Force, the Crusaders, and Moana Pacifica. The Crusaders are playing Moana Pacifica, so whoever loses that one is definitely out. But as I said, depends on what happens with the Drua game. Anyway, the Crusaders will be big-time favorites for that one. They'll be looking for a bonus point win. Uh, the Waratahs and the Reds, I said the Waratahs season is over, but they would certainly love to end the season uh, with a win over their traditional rivals. They could use a third win of the season because they've only beaten the Crusaders thus far. Uh, the Reds, it'll be interesting to see if they rest any players for that game because, as I said, fifth spot is already locked in for them. Uh, the Drua against the Rebels, it's absolutely must win for the Drua. If the Drua win, as I said, they are, they are free. So they will finish uh, in that eighth spot. They will be playing whoever finishes first away from home, which for the Drua doesn't seem like a great deal because they don't travel well, but they want to get that playoff spot. They're really good in Fiji. The Rebels are in terrible form, but man, the pressure is going to be on for that one. Hurricanes, Highlanders. Uh, as I said, the Highlanders can look threatening <clears throat> in some of their games this year, but the Hurricanes just went down to Waikato and beat the Chiefs, so Hurricanes will be big-time favorites. Blues Chiefs is another one of these kind of top-of-the-table clashes. The Blues will be looking to bounce back after that loss to the Crusaders and secure top spot. <clears throat> but it could come down to bonus points. We'll see. Uh, you would think the Hurricanes are more likely to get a bonus point over the Highlanders than the Blues over the Chiefs. But we will see. And then uh, the final game, the Force from Perth taking on the Brumbies. The Force's playoff hopes are still alive. But they need the Drua to lose for them to be in with a chance. And they are playing the Brumbies. So that seems like a pretty tough prospect in itself. But yeah, the Force have taken some scalps at home this year. If you guys want to watch the games and you're in the States, Flow Rugby is the place. They've got Super Rugby and the upcoming playoffs. They've got the Top 14 and their upcoming playoffs. They've got the URC and their upcoming playoffs. So there's certainly a fair bit of rugby on if you guys are looking to watch in the United States. But yes, you guys let us know your thoughts on Super Rugby penultimate round. How do you think the playoffs are going to line up? Would you like to see the Crusaders make it or do you just want them out so they can't win it? You guys let us know your thoughts and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.